Joel Richardson, as most of you know, has been on my show several times and is a dear friend of mine, a dear brother in the Lord. He is a biblical scholar. He is a New York Times best-selling author. Uh, some of you have read and, and owned uh, his books, uh, The Islamic Antichrist, Mideast Beast, uh, his latest book, When a Jew Rules the World. They are all excellent, excellent books. I have them all, have read them all, and we're going to be referring to those as we talk today because not, not only all of that is in his resume, but he's also a film producer. He is also a, um, a missionary, if you will. And, and goes to the Middle East, has been right into the heart of the Middle East and into the heart of Iraq and into the heart of ISIS uh, territory while all of this is going on in the world. And, uh, and, and he doesn't call himself a prophet. He doesn't even come close to doing that. But if you've read his books, some of them written 10, 11, 12 years ago, and see where we are now, Joel is a prophet. His website is joelstrumpet.com. So, Prophet Joel, welcome to Freedom Friday today. It's great to have you with us. That's quite an introduction. It's good to, <laughs> it's good to be on with you, Carl. I appreciate it. Well, it, it is. And, you know, um, I, I was talking to you just briefly off air before we went on the air, and I've had the great pleasure of being with you and the honor of being with you. Uh, we were on the Jim Baker Show together. Now, we were there all day doing filming. How many episodes did we wind up being on together after they edited it? Two, three episodes, probably. I want to say at least at least three different episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and 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 that was that was an amazing time. I mean, Jim Baker's a gracious, gracious man and a gracious host. But uh, uh, but you and I were able to really get some good stuff out there to the world, and and that was a lot of fun. And uh, and then you and I also, um, I have the honor of being accompanied with you or, or connected with you uh, sometimes in interviews at WND.com and, uh, and, and in, in a lot of articles that we do about, you know, biblical matters and where we are today and geopolitical slash biblical prophetic issues. And, and uh, so that's a lot of fun, too. So to have you on the show today for the entire two hours for us to talk about major themes of, uh, of eschatology and theology and geopolitics. Uh, this is going to be fun, and I really appreciate you taking that amount of time out of your day to, to be here with the Freedom Friday audience. And we have an audience from coast to coast that listens live, a large audience, and of course we podcast and uh, we make videos out of all this stuff. And so, so what you and I are going to talk about today uh, is not going to be heard just for this two hours. It's going to go on and on out there for a long time. So I'm really looking forward to this, Joel. Great. Hey, well, listen, Carl, I have to make it very clear. The honor is mine as well. I, I really enjoy our conversations, and you know, you are sounding a trumpet and waking people up and alerting people to the urgency of the hour. So, you know, well, one can chase a thousand, two can set ten thousand to flight, and I, I enjoy the opportunity to partner with you to wake the church and the world at large up. It's, uh, it, it's really my honor as well. Well, thank you. You're very, very kind. Well, listen, let's do this, Joel. I, I gave you an introduction, and everything I said was, was correct, and I'm sure there's so much more that could be said about you. Uh, you are a humble man. You truly are, and I don't want to embarrass you because you're humble. You're now embarrassed that I said that, but you are. In fact, when people ask me, you know, that know that you and I work together and that we've been together and they ask me about you, that's one of the first things I tell them is that he's an extremely humble man. Uh, but because you you are. Um, um, I, 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 I'm going to ask you, if you would please, just tell people about your ministry, where they can find your materials, the kinds of things you do. Tell them about the movie you've just produced. By the way, I've, I've watched it three times, and I've shared it with churches and pastors and other people. So just take a few moments and, and tell folks about your ministry. Tell them about you going to the Middle East, and, and just let people know who you are and what you do and where your heart is. You know, behind it all, my heart really is, as you said, uh, is to be a missionary, is to be an evangelist. Um, you know, so much of the end-time stuff, that's all stuff that's sort of just come along with that. For yeah. many years, from the early 90s, I had been giving myself to uh, to reaching out to Muslims. I, years ago, when I first came to faith, there was a missionary that had come to my church. He was working in Kazakhstan, Muslim-majority nation, with the poorest of the poor, telling stories of cleansing lepers and, and praying for lepers, and I thought to myself, this was the early 90s, I said, I didn't know we still had lepers in the world, you know, I've, I've never heard of this thing, and 
he explained that the Islamic world is the part of the world that needs the gospel far more than any other part of the world, right. and yet it's the part of the world that we're not sending missionaries to, that the Protestant Church is sending just a teeny percentage of missionaries to the Islamic world, and so in uh, just classic Pentecostal form, I went to the altar, I knelt down, I felt the call, and I gave my life to the Islamic world, and um, you know I've been pursuing that ever since, uh, but it was really, it was after 9-11, after, you know, years of interacting with Muslims on, you know, on a theological, relational level, that I really began to discern in my ongoing studies the simple fact that Islam is not simply another in a series of false world religions. Right. And that really is how I used to categorize it. I used to say, well, you know, you have Buddhism and Hinduism right. and Islam, right. and, you know, they're, they're all false religions there. And, you know, Islam just happens to be the biggest one, but CERN, uh, you know, really 2002, 2003 is when these ideas really started coming together, is that the role of Islam in the last days is a profound, it will have a profound role, a yes. premier role, if not the premier role uh, in the last days. And so that's when I started writing about those things, uh, 2003, 2004 is, when I wrote my first book, Islamic Antichrist, as you mentioned. Yeah. And, yeah, today when you go back and read uh, some of the chapters in that, it really does have a prophetic feel. You know, I have a, a whole section on the black flags coming from the east I and they're marching towards I know. It's Jerusalem, amazing. the beheading. Yeah, it's amazing. Let me just interject, and I want you to keep going. But, no, you're right. That's why I said earlier, I mean, you don't claim to be a prophet, and, and I don't either. I mean, we don't go around billing ourselves as prophets, but I've been preaching and teaching on this stuff for 25 years. Uh, you wrote a book that won New York Times bestselling uh, slot, uh, uh, what, 12 years ago. And, and when you go back and look at my preaching and teaching and, and what I've been presenting to the world and warning the world of, of and what's in your book in writing— Man, you you have really proven to be very prophetic. But anyway, go ahead. So you warned of the black flags coming from the east. Go ahead. You know, in the beheadings, uh, just talking about the fact that you know, we can look at the scriptures and see that the issue of beheading is going to become a primary, a, a huge issue in the last days. And of course, in the early uh, you know two thousand early part of the, this century, you know, we had a handful of beheadings. In the news, you had Nicholas Berg was the first really well-known. You had Daniel Pearl, actually, was the first, and right. Nicholas Berg. Um, and, and, you know, those shocked people. But, you know, I wrote about this becoming a normal thing. And, in fact, uh, can you imagine that we, we could get to the point where we've actually got beheading fatigue? You know, we saw 21 Christians beheaded on video recently, and then it was followed by roughly another 30, and the 30 barely even made the news. I saw that. I noticed that. I, I bemoaned the very same thing. Go ahead, Joel. Well, it's just, I mean, you know, so here we are. We've reached the point in time when we can, you know, on our smartphones, we are looking at the fulfillment of biblical prophecy. Right. And I saw the souls of those that were beheaded specifically because of their testimony uh, to Jesus, right. and the fact that they, you know, they did not love their lives unto death. You see these passages beginning to be fulfilled right now in front of us. Right. And so, yeah, you're right. I would not claim to be a prophet, but by the same token, I would not deny that, that at, like any Christian out there, as we're giving ourselves to study and prayer, the Lord does open up and sort yes. of give us a glimpse of, of the things that are going to unfold in the yes. future. Very well said. And so, yeah, I mean, I saw these things years ago, and now it's it's so common that we're actually beginning to be hardened to it. Right. And that's this is the time that we're now living in. No, you, listen, listen, brilliantly spoken, Joel, and, and, and my heart and your heart, I think, are the very same on this. In fact, I know they are because we've talked personally and been together for, for hours and hours, and we've talked about these things, and that is that— you know, no, we don't. Listen, when I hear someone get on TV and pronounce, I am a prophet, or I see some guy on YouTube saying, I am a prophet, yeah, I'm a little skeptical of that. I mean, I want, I want to hear their prophecies. I want to measure them against the Word of God. It, you and I have never done that. I, I know I will never do that, and I'm sure you will not either. Uh, but, but as you just said, when you're a student of the Word, 
for decades like you and I both have been. And we study and we compare what the Word of God says in context with biblical word studies and contextual studies of, of, of theological and eschatological truths from Genesis to Revelation, and you compare those to the geopolitical circumstances of today, and then you and I say, look, this could be this, and this might be that, and this sure looks like this. And then the years go by, and boom, there they are. Well, that's how God works, as you said, through any Christian who will take the time to apply themselves to the world and 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 discern the times in which we live. Is isn't that right, Joel? Yeah, I mean, the, the and this is the thing: is God still speaks to His people. That doesn't right. mean that we all hear audible voices and have uh, you know ecstatic visions like the prophets of old. But the fact of the matter is that every Christian that has the Holy Spirit in them has Thank the you. opportunity to learn from God himself. And, you know, we have to be clear, on this side, uh, you know, in this age, we see through a glass darkly, That's right. we see as in a mirror dimly, right. and we are not going to have clarity, but we do get glimpses, as through a glass darkly, of the future. And this is really the job of, of the, uh, you know, the pastors and the watchers, those that are warning and trying to wake up the Church, because the simple fact of the matter is, the majority of the Church today is asleep, and yeah. in particularly in the West. But, you know, unfortunately, I find, even in my global travel, that it's not just in the United States, it's not just in the West, that the Church, by and large, globally, is asleep. And yeah. it is incumbent upon those that have heard and those that have seen and those that are at least somewhat awake to awaken the rest of the Church, because there, you know, there are extremely difficult and dark days ahead. And if we wake up now and prepare our hearts now, then we will save ourselves a world of hurt right. uh, in the days ahead. Right, right. No, I agree, Joel, and that's my heart as well. And you know, your books, The Islamic Antichrist, Mideast Beast, we're going to get more into those in a moment, some of the things that you said years ago. And your, and, and, and your book, uh, When a Jew Rules the World, excellent, excellent. And your movie, we haven't even talked about that yet. But when you take those and then throw my book in the mix, Final Warning, Understanding the Trumpet Days of Revelation, a result of 25 years of research and study and preaching and teaching. You put all that stuff together, and, and I say over and over in my book, over and over I say, look, I could be wrong about this. I'm not dogmatic, but take a look. Here's what the Scripture says. Here's what's happening in the world. Church, wake up and at least take a look. And you say the same kinds of things. That's what we. That's all we're wanting. We're, we're not out stomping our feet insisting and demanding that everything that we set forth is 1,000% correct. What we're trying to do is to wake the church up to what is happening around us and the prophetic times in which we're living. Am I near about correct on that? You are definitely near about correct. You know, one of the things I appreciate, you mentioned that you and I had the chance, the opportunity, the honor to be on a uh, a handful of episodes with Jim Baker. Yeah. One of the things that I so appreciate about that man, you know, and I've said it, and I've said it to him, and I've said it on a show, I I didn't know what to expect before I met Jim, you know, former yeah. televangelist and his whole history. But I really, in meeting him, I fell in love with him and his family and just the whole ministry that he, he has down there. Such a humble man. But who in the world writes a book called I Was Wrong? Right. And, you know, I said to him on the show, I said, listen, I am going to be wrong. I am wrong. I will be wrong. Everyone that is speaking of the future, there will be things that we will miss. And so this is something I appreciate about you, which is your humility, and you're not being dogmatic. You're not saying, this is that. You're saying, could this be that? It right. certainly seems as though it may be that. And regardless, the takeaway for, for sure is that we need to be alert. We need to wake up. Yeah, and, you know, yeah. there's so many in the Church today that just, they really try to downplay that poo-poo anyone that is trying to alert the Church to the urgency yeah. of the hour. And yeah. really, Thank they're you. functioning as those who are trying to put the Church back to sleep. Go back to right. sleep, everything's fine. <laughs> things are not fine. <laughs> 